Liverpool zero, Atalanta three. And what an embarrassment tonight. I'm sorry to say this, but it was an absolute embarrassment. From the start to the finish, the lot of them. Gakpo is the only player that came out with it. Had they all died. And that is saying something after this season with him. Absolute disgusting from the back to the front. The, the, the forwards cannot shoot for the life in them. Mm. The back, I don't know what happened tonight with the back. Absolutely everywhere. The midfield flat. Everything tonight was embarrassing. And I'm sorry to say this, but a lot of Liverpool fans have been wondering where this has come from because this result has come from being behind so many times. Mm. You can't be behind every single week and expect to come back. It's not good enough. It's simply not good enough. And if you think you can go behind all the time and you can win trophies, you're not in the right spot. You're not Mm -hmm. supporting the right spot. This mindset up here needs to start from the beginning. You do not start when we're 1-0 down or 2-0 down. That's not good enough. Because Mm -hmm. at some point, when you're 1-0 down, 2-0 down, you're not going to come back. There's no way of coming back. Tonight we've seen that. And we've been absolutely battered by a six-player side in Italy. I'm not taking any credit away from Atlanta. They were brilliant, by the way. They outplayed us. In fact, they looked more dangerous than we did going forward, mm. despite being sixth placed. They looked like the more control on the ball, they looked like they knew what they were doing. They looked like they wanted it more. And we sat there and allowed them to play football the way they did. We sat there and allowed them to bully us. Bully us at Anfield. Anfield. Boys, I'm going in tonight because I'm, I'm sick of has been put on this pedestal like we're the best team in the world, we've got the best strike in the world and this, when really we've been getting through games, scraping mm. games by sheer mentality alone this season, a lot. Mm. We're rightfully in a, a title race, we're rightfully in, what was rightfully in a quadruple run for a little bit, but we need to fucking book our ideas up and quick because Jürgen Klopp's going to be leaving with one fucking trophy on his back again, Carabao Cup, and that's not good enough for Klopp. He's going to have a legacy which he doesn't deserve. It's as simple as that. Carter, give me your initial thoughts of that. Honestly, it was like it's like men against boys. It's like every time we went in for like a, a, a duel on the floor, like went up for a ball, every time we sort of went long from the goalkeeper, it just came back and back and back. And I just think, I, I don't know, maybe it is running out of steam. It's a lot of games, but I I just feel like, like as you've kind of said, and I'm not trying to be reactionary, I think a lot of games, sometimes we scrape through with like a great individual goal. And if Elliot's goes in, that's probably that great bit of individual play. It goes in, it changes the game. We feel mm. more confident, but oh, you're, you right. can't do that every game. Like you can't, like the Fulham, Fulham game, we score four unbelievable goals. Sheffield, unbelievable goal from McAllister. Like Leicester, Subasly, Screamer. Like sometimes we are just too, I think, like you said, mentality, I think it's it's quality of player. Like when you've got top, top players, that's the difference between us and Atalanta today. Atalanta were a well-drilled, organised team. And we felt like 11 guys, maybe 10, because Endo was just running around. But, and Costa Simicast as well, probably don't want to have a go at me, you only play 45 minutes. But we go just seemed like individual in, individual in, guys. In. Like, yeah. like there wasn't much chemistry. I thought Gakpo, fair enough, Gakpo, really good today. But it felt a lot, like a lot more like we were a team of individuals and they were a proper, well-coached, well-drilled team. So it's just, I think it's just difficult. Reese, there have been times where I have sat here, right, mm. and I've defended, I've defended certain players. I've defended Darwin Nunes and, and rightfully so at times because he's been absolutely unbelievable in games. But I'm sorry, from what I see in our chat, right, when they say, like, oh, he's the best striker in the world. Is he fuck the best striker in the world? I'm sorry. He's not nowhere near the best striker in the world. He's never been the best striker in the world. He can't be the best striker in the world if you can't fucking finish it in. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, he's never been. The amount of chances he gets to score chances. We've had Torres at this club. We've had Suarez at this club. We've had the best striker. We've had Fowler without knowing. The most clinical strikers we've ever had in this team. He's not there with that. He's not world-class yet. He can be world-class, don't get me wrong. And he's absolutely fantastic player. And he's yeah. a better all round football than Haaland. I said that as well. I've always, I've always backed him regarding that. But finishing, fucking shit. 
Mm. It's shit. Least. It's weird. It's weird because he'll score goals, hard ones easily, and the easy ones he he will mess up. And he's been like that all season and last season. But I think even though all our, our forwards are in double figures for goals, um, I agree with what Carl is saying as well. A lot of games we've been getting our gel. If you uh, we're making it harder than it needs to, as you if you look at City and Arsenal, like I said, not to, uh, I hate to bring them up, but. They'll be getting through most of the games, especially Arsenal, especially against teams they're supposed to beat. Whereas we'll be beating teams, but we make hard work of it. And like I said, you can't do that the whole season. At some point, you've got to hit form. Whereas, mm. And today, I still think, even though they should have just kind of let it go, they look like they're still kind of thinking about the United game and then putting that pressure from that game into this game. Whereas, yeah, we we drew against them and it's annoying, but you've got to move on from that. And then you've got to focus on today. And then even the changes... The team, whatever team we put out, should have won, but it looked like the rhythm was off. Too much changes. It, it looked like more individual. It didn't look like a team. It looked like people were just doing their own thing. And the whole game was very rushed when we were playing. It was too frantic. Too, too frantic, like rushing, rushing. Can you give Can you give an excuse of tiredness and, and legs going? Because a lot of players don't usually start that play tonight and start at the game. And then mm. the players that come off the bench, they were, they were fresh and ready to go again. Maybe tiredness, but like you said, he's he's changed some of the teams. So some players got to rest, and then some guys that's come in. But some of the ones that come in, I'm not blaming them because guys like Simakas and that they haven't played for how long. So yes, he didn't play that well, but he's only just come in. You can't expect him to be at the same like in terms of like momentum wise as El Gomez or Robinson. But even some of the subs for me, I wouldn't have brought Salah. I would have brought Jota on earlier, even though he's just come back. He looks sharper. He he done not sharper, but he looks like he done more mm. than what a lot of our forwards done. Like when he come on, he almost got us a penalty straight away. And a couple of the headers and stuff were like away from goal, but he looked a lot better than the rest of our the rest of our four. Like I would have brought him on, and I would have brought Trent on early. I think some of the subs, there's too much favoritism. They brought Salah, and he brought Sabozza, like brought Diaz, and all of them have not really been doing anything. Uh, like obviously, Salah gets his goals here and there, but you saw the United game, you saw some of the other games. They're not really like you said. They can't hit a barn door. It seems like like it doesn't matter who's. That's why I said the only one I really trust up front is Jaw in terms of cleaning corners. The rest of them, they have to have five or six chances before they score. Gapper was good today. He was sharp today, and he looked like he had a bee in his bonnet. But like I said, the rest of the, the team just looked like individuals. Didn't really look like a team. Looked like too much pressure. It wasn't really no leaders. Didn't show. That's that's the thing. And Gapper, like I said, Gapper is the only one that can. He's the only one who looked like he was playing for the bad. And he's not only been the one that's been scapegoated a lot in the last the recent weeks, and he has been poor, very poor. Mm. But at least he actually turned up tonight. Um, subs at halftime killed us, says El Hero. Um, I don't know about I don't know because subs needed to be made because they were that poor first half. I would have kept subs I, needed to be made. I would have kept Elliot, and I thought that was a little harsh. I thought Elliot was was all right, and you got to remember he was unlucky not to score that that shot. It kind of hit the bar and the post. Like Carter said, if that goal kind of went in earlier on. That probably would have changed the game because it would have been relaxed for the first goal. Probably would have got more, but yeah, obviously it didn't work out. It was supposed to work out. So. <clears throat> Kings, would would you say that's the worst, worst performance this season? Worst season? Yes, definitely. Um, they were poor today from the off. There's no excuses. I, I don't think the selection was the best, maybe from Klopp. Mm-hmm. And I think the fans, all of us in a way, probably looked at that and thought, we'll be fine here. You know, especially at home, and um, they have rolled us over. And fair play to them, to the goals they scored, they took their chances. We only had two proper chances for the majority of the game, apart from the end with Jotterix. But Nunes should have scored, and mm. Elliot was unlucky that it hit the crossbar, hit the post, and come out. So okay, you can't blame him for that. He tried his best, but you know, if them two had gone in, things would have been vastly different, I think. But it, it just seemed off the pace. It just seemed sluggish. It didn't attack like they normally do it just the fluidity wasn't there and maybe the pressure's getting to him because it's Klopp's last season I don't know and they're all expecting to do something good for him but I mean after you can see from the last few games you know all them shots against United they didn't win the game the um Sheffield United game last week you know okay yes they won in the end but after Nunes had that lucky goal really all right fair enough yeah that's the striker's thing he's got to go for it when the goalie's got it he felt lucky, but it came off him and, and went in. But for a large part of that game, they struggled against United, uh, Sheffield United. 
until the goals later in the game. And then it's like, oh, it's 3 1, it was fine, it was easy. It's like, it wasn't that easy during large percentages of that game. No. So I'm just wondering yeah. the last few games if they've just gone off the boil at the wrong time, to be honest, because it's, uh, it's, it wasn't great tonight, to be honest, sitting watching that. We've struggled against a few teams, especially in recent months. Like we struggled against Brighton, we struggled against Forest. It's a, a 90th minute winner against Forest. It was probably at the moment in terms of form, probably the worst side in the league. And we went to around the 96th minute goal, and a 97th minute goal to beat them. Um, we're rightly in a title race because we've been unbelievable at times and we've showed mentality where that never give up attitude, where last season we didn't have it at all. I don't know if that's new players coming in and they're giving us that different sort of mindset, but starting games is just fucking terrible. Honestly, it's just terrible starting games. We should never, ever be starting games off the back foot. We, when we when we had the Rogers season, when we were 13 14, when we came second, we literally steamrolled teams in the first half and the game over half time, near mm-hmm. enough every week. And that's what we should be doing. And Carter said it before we came live about um, our title winning season. We rarely conceded, and when we did concede, like, oh, we conceded. We did. Mm-hmm. But now it's just expected to concede. Mm-hmm. You're not going to win fucking titles off expecting to concede. They're too open. It's not. It's simply not good enough. And, we, and what gets me is where we put ourselves on pedestals. Like we're saying, like, oh, we're, we've been unbelievable. We're, we'll go one nil down. Like, oh, it's Liverpool. We're going to come back. We're gonna, we can't expect to come back all the time. I'm sorry. To simply call it out for what it is, it's not. Mm. It's not good enough to go behind in the first place. We spoke in the chat earlier. We've been behind twenty times this season. First. 20 times. Mm. We're challenging for title being behind 20 times first. That is that is disgusting. Yeah, that's a horrible stat. That's horrible. Man City and Arsenal are nowhere near that. There's no mm. way that they've gone behind first near 20 times. Nowhere near. And we may go on and win the league. We've got a very good chance of winning the league. We're joint top just by goal difference second. We've still got a very good chance of winning the league. But with this attitude and with, with this... Pathetic starts we're starting with. We ain't going to win the league. I'm sorry. We're not going to win the league with that attitude and that mindset. And that we would love to rely on an unbelievable European night comeback again, but it's not going to be at Anfield this time, which is a big difference. Reese, can we make that comeback? We can. Right now, I can't see it though, but we can. Look, for me, when it was at 2-0, I was hoping we kept it at 2 and maybe we could have got a goal. Obviously, we're kind of we're kind of lucky that there's no... Uh, what's it? The away goals rule, they took that away. Because if that yeah, was yeah. still there... No, I, I don't think so. But we we can. But like I said, what we can do is we've got to try and focus on the next game. But I just hope that they don't go into that game like how they did today uh, on, against Palace. Obviously, there's going to be pressure because they put that pressure on themselves. So, but, like I said, I hope Klopp kind of tells them about himself because I think, like you said, a lot of the time, even though we have been good at times and a certain praise, at certain times we've been getting away with a lot. And then we, and then our fan base, a lot of us will be like, we've got the best this and the best that, whereas we haven't won anything yet to be saying we've got the best this or the best that. So not I think, even, not the, I think even the players have been feeling themselves a little bit. So even though it's not nice what's happened today, I'm hoping it can give some sort of something. And I hope Klopp kind of lays into them because that, that, that's what's kind of needed to, for me. I was hoping team. this was going to be a big bounce back from, from Sunday, if I'm honest. That's what, yeah, yeah, I thought so. But, uh, but it, it, it could be filtered out now into into Sunday again. And it's, if I'm honest, it's not really looking good right now. I know we're trying to top and we're saying all that and that. But it's, it's, it's the mindset and the, and the confidence that this could be knocked can easily go into the league, easily go into the league. Because that game against Man United was one where it didn't just get away from us, fucking hell. We should have had three points wrapped up, top of the league, and then into the into tonight with absolute confidence. And now we're staring down a game on Sunday, which is becoming a must-win game, which it's, it's every single game seems to be must-win down in the Premier League. And not having to rely on the Europa League to to get us through either because if you know if we go to Sunday and think oh we lose that and then we've got at least we've got your play to turn it around and, and get some confidence back but that's we could be out we we are looking like we're out 
already. I've never seen us look to an away leg Kings. Having played at Anfield first, I'd be out already. But that's mad. I think it's obviously better for us when we play the other way around. I hate playing yeah. the games like this where, and like, obviously, if we'd have run out 3 0 winners ourselves and then gone there, everyone's like, well, that doesn't matter. We've, we've pretty much hopefully wrapped it up in the first leg. Going away now to Italy is going to be, even though there's six in the league, I think they said on the, the commentary, it's something like 10 out of the last 11 games at home. They, I don't think they've lost. You know, and it's like they're on a good one at home. Um, Gasparini, to be fair to him, he, he sussed Liverpool out last time and they said, you know, when, when there was no fans here. You know, yeah. that's, now that wasn't much change and we, fair enough, there was different circumstances, but he does he does seem a decent coach, to be fair to the guy. Um, it's a very difficult game now to go back there. 3-0. Like if we'd have gone 2-1, you know, maybe at the end just nicked the goal before they got their third, then it's like it's different then. We could have got an early goal and you think, right, rock them a little bit at home. 3-0 before we even kick off now. It's like, that's a hell of a, a comeback if they're going to do it. But, I mean, yes, they can do it. They have the, the players and they do have the skill. It's just the mentality of them now. Are they going to go there feeling defeated already? You know, it's... Um, and like you say, does that rub off in the league? So, depending now what happens against Palace, if they beat Palace, and they're a bit of a bogey side as well, to be honest. You know, there's a couple of times they've scuppered things for those over the years. So I think, well, if they do well on Sunday, then it might carry over to the next game. But yeah, it's a bit of a dodgy time at the moment. Mm. Um, Calvin, welcome, welcome to a Liverpool stream, Calvin. I know you're tired of watching Chelsea streams, and not the, you're not you're not getting much fun at the moment. But I'm as much the distance away from Liverpool than you are at the top of the league, my friend. So please enjoy your night and hope you have a great weekend. Yeah, I find that hilarious. A hilarious Chelsea. Oh, uh, we can't keep clean sheets, so we would need to score five and a half runs in there. <coughs> we do, just didn't turn up. Calvin, now you're in top half. It would be a miracle to get back in this tight, and I think we're out, says David. Um, Paul made a good point earlier about Endo. Um, what has happened to Endo? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to say this because it needs saying. And I spoke to Carter before the stream about Endo. And I said, the biggest mistake we made, I did a video on it at the start of the season, the biggest mistake we made was not get a proper six, but a proper, like, world-class six, or, like, someone that potentially to be world-class. And Endo came in, and I was happy with Endo, and I was, I was happy with this, how good Endo could be in, in certain games. And he's been better than, even, even more better than what I expected him to be. I thought he'd be decent signing, but he's even been better. And I think he deserves everything, every plaudit he gets, Endo. But he's still, I still think he's not that six that we still need for these games, for winning trophies. He's been fantastic. But against Man United and against, uh, you know, against Man City and, and tonight again, in these games where you need to pick up, you need, and this is where, like Declan Rice comes in, for example, because Declan Rice has been that in these games. He's been the difference maker. And I, lo I absolutely love Endo. Absolutely fantastic sign. I knew it'd be a good fact signing. But he's still... And when people say, oh, we don't need six now, we don't need six, we've got Endo. Fucking watch football, man, I swear. It's like they don't watch football. This guy can do so much, but... It, it, Look, his age is going to catch up on him as well at some point. I know he's fit as anything, but we can't be going into the next season and season after. And season after, we're a you know a thirty-year-old, thirty-one-year-old, thirty-two-year-old player in DM in such an important position. I'm sorry, we can't. Not if we want to be fighting for titles. And I'd be very shocked whoever comes in sees him as the number one six. Yeah, next season I'm not worried anyway. I think we'll get. I think we'll get a six because you got Edwards. And how they operate in terms of age, they know. Endo's a good player, but we always knew he's not long term. He's thirty. Mm. Is he how old is he? Is he thirty? I think or thirty one. So yeah, obviously the last couple it's games. Now, yeah. Last couple one. games, he's, he's, he has been a bit rusty, but I'm not going to criticize him too much because yeah, yeah. because most of the team, like I said, there's other guys who are more senior players. It's not his fault. Been, it's not Endo's been, fault. He's in the position. It's not Endo's fault. He's in the position. He shouldn't have been coming in to be the number one six. And I don't think he was meant to be the number one six. It's just mm. certain people don't put money out to help Young Klopp get the people they want. Because he'd have got it. Young Klopp would have been happy with Kaiseido and Endo, by the way. 
I think it, I think that would have been this perfect scenario. But yeah. what can we do? And, and like oh. Paul says here, there's a reason why Rice and Roger play hundred million pound players. And like sometimes you just got to pay the money for the for the class like you get. You got to pay the money, and every single player is very rare. You get a player that's not overpriced these days. So you got to pay what you get, and what I don't even look at the transfer fees anyway. Is what, what as long as they're performing on the pitch, I don't care. And Endo has been an absolute bargain. For the money he's got, it's just I still think there's this. It's just not the guy that we need for those sort of games. I'm not saying he ain't going to play good next week because he actually could, he could, he could put, put a man of match performance next week. But I need consistency in that position. Um, Carter going into next week. Obviously, Salah got rested tonight. Diaz got rested tonight. Who gets dropped next week, and what? How would you go about next week? Would you just go for it? I think I think you have to go for it, but I think a big a big issue for me, and this kind of leads into what you're saying about Endo. I honestly think I think he's unbelievable off the bench, but I think we need to find a way to play Elliot in the team because he's so creative, he's so positive. Like, and I don't want to drag out Sobersly, but some of the times Sobersly recently, it's just basic errors. Like mm. Elliot, like Sobersly, out of all the players in the midfield, he's going to win you more games. If he's at his best, I think he'd win you more games than any of the others. And he's so big and he's so quick. But he is just, it's like, it's, it's generally like Sunday league mistakes, like the flicking it back, the bad touches in the middle. Whereas I think Elliot's put, I think Elliot is seven or eight out of 10 every week nowadays. I think you have to fit him in. And I think I'd go with like him, Salah, Nunes and Diaz. Like, I think, I don't, I don't think you can play Jota a whole 90 yet. I just, I think we're just stuck in like, a bit of a weird position because I think now we've got all these attackers, but do they work together? Like, I think Gakpo looked great today because he didn't have Diaz going into the same spaces as him. Mm-hmm. Like, I thought both of them want to come in and dribble the ball up and that kind of thing. So you need someone in the middle, but then it's like Diaz gives you so much intensity and pressing. And so I, I think Klopp's just got a bit of a difficult decision at the moment. Like I think it's definitely Salah, it's definitely Nunes, and it's probably definitely Diaz. Hopefully it works, and I think probably, if, in my opinion, our, our most important attacker hasn't played for however many months in Trent, and he's the one for me. If he comes back and we play Atalanta, I think we can win it. Like I think people people have forgot with how well Bradley's done. Trent was people saying Trent was the best player in the league. Like was Trent, playing, yeah. Trent was winning game and game and game. Two goals against Fulham, great performance against City. Like he just. I feel like right now no one's McAllister's done it a bit, but like Trent took every game by the scruff of the neck this year. And I think someone like today, today someone needed to do that and no one did. And that's a big issue for us, I think, at the moment. It was Sobber's life for the third goal, wasn't it? His pass for the third goal. Was it it was too lackluster on the ball, wasn't it? It was definitely yeah, it was Sobber's life. And we can't be lackluster in these games. We cannot be lackluster in these games because you get punished. And you get punished at the highest level. And and this is not the highest level, by the way. But Atlanta are a decent enough side to punish you. And the same in the Premier League. You lack lustre once. And it happened last week with Quanta. A bit lack lustre on the ball, passed the ball back, punished. And it was an insane finish by Fernandez. But you yeah. just you can't be like lustre in these games. Um, and it's so important to play these. It's hard because Quanta has been unbelievable again. But it's a youngster because we can't rely on youngsters in these games either sometimes. Because mm-hmm. you need that experience. You need that. Person that's just going to calm it down a little bit more. And um, a lot, a lot of this, though, I feel like I said, is again us not taking our chances, though. Because if you say that game against United, if Ponza makes a mistake, we put our chances away. We're four or yeah. five now for half time. It, even though we'll be oh, a little annoyed, we'll be like, oh, unlucky. And again, today in the first half, we had a good few chances. We didn't put our chances away. And we've been like that all season where we've been, like I said, we've been winning, but. It's not a fair reflection if you look at the domination. We're, we're missing five or six chances. I think today, was it two or three on target? And we probably maybe had, I'm assuming, I haven't seen the stat, but we probably had probably over 10 off target, probably. And that's how we it's been five shots the first season. Which, which one? It was a poor first. Like five shots, and everyone was saying, like, oh, it's, it's my night all over again. No, because we had about fucking 20 shots against my night first half. It won't my yeah, night even, even, even the game against shots. them, I think, the FA Cup, I think it was like 30 or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, yeah. but the but the clinicalness is not there. Yeah. So yeah, you know I mean, um, we were not suited for slow build up with back and got punished. 
Mm. Uh, go for it. David says here, go for it next week. Try and get an early goal. Try school and get back. Try to pull another Barca and like, and after that performance, but not impossible. It's not impossible. That's the thing. It's not impossible. With this with this team and with this club, it's, nothing's ever impossible. That's the thing. That's why it's so good being a Liverpool fan sometimes. Like, you could be 7 0 down, you'd, you'd still have a chance of coming back. But going to Atalanta away, 3 0 down. It's gonna be a it's gonna be a tough one, a very tough one. But Klopp has to get it right, and he's got to play his best eleven from the start, and they've got to go for it. And if they do go for it, they could, I think they could scare Atalanta. But mm. tonight we just seemed like we didn't want to go for it. It was a weird, it was a weird first half for me. Second half we came out of the traps a little bit better, but again that's 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 being behind and and uh, it shouldn't be on the second half to come come out again. This we start from, from the start. And if, if they come out from the start next week, I think we do beat them. But 3 0, you know, if they feel a the goal, you're talking 4 or 5 goals. Mm. So it's going to be a big ask. Um, I, 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 don't even, I don't even know what to say about tonight, honestly, anymore, because it, it's, it's, it, it, it's, not as ex, it's not as surprising to me than, than it is to a lot of Liverpool fans. I think a lot of Liverpool fans are very surprised by this. But I think they've been in the dark and probably gaslighted their own team a little bit too much to realise what is actually going on. It's like, watch the game and realise that against my night, we were absolutely terrible. We may have dominated. You can dominate the game and still be terrible. You know, you can have 85% possession and still be terrible. It doesn't matter. If you break teams down and, and, and miss one-on-ones and stuff like that, then that's not terrible as bad because you, at least you're getting behind people. But tonight, we weren't even doing that. We made what one 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 on one chance in the first half of Nunes. I don't know if you've ever seen that bat, by the way. What on earth was that shot? I don't because know why he, he didn't. He didn't even turn his body to shoot. He I don't just, know why he didn't hit it with his left foot. Chasing. He tried to shoot, do something funny with the outside of his right or something. He should have just used his left. I would have the side footed it. That's what I would have ideally. You know, I questioned Nunes tonight, and that's his football IQ. And I saw this in the first half of when uh, Maka was on the commentary. And Maka as was one of the best football IQ players I've seen at Liverpool. He was unbelievable. He could play right wing, left wing, number ten. He was all over the pitch, and he was such a skillful, mindful player that he was calling it out himself in comms over Nunes. And it was a, it was an instant in the first half where someone passing the ball in the box, and instead of like letting it go onto his right foot where it created space for a shot. He saw a shot with his left foot and he come back in the inside, even though no space at all on the inside. And Maka said, Why is he not le- why is he not putting that onto his right or, or at least letting it go across his body? <clears throat> and that's that's football in IQ. And again with the one on one, he didn't even turn his body to shoot. He literally shot the way he was facing, which was just straight out. Re- uh, Kings, what do you make of Nunes? Um, we've talked about him before. Yeah, he seems to want ten chances to score a goal, and at the top level, you can't do that. You need ten chances and score seven goals. It's simple as you need to be more clinical. I mean, if Salah would have been like this when he was playing for Liverpool over the years, and needed ten chances for every goal, he wouldn't have stayed at the top, would he? He'd have been dropped in the end. I like the guy, and he does cause chaos on the pitch, but he's not clinical enough. Um, sometimes he gets lucky and sometimes he's outstanding and gets a goal and you, yeah. you can go from one extreme to the other. It's like, like I say, the, the, the goal against Sheffield last week, a little bit comical, he jumps up, it hits him on the backside, it's in, it's like it's one of them. It's like, okay, fair enough. He tried and it paid off. Other times, like Newcastle earlier in the season, comes off the bench, fantastic. The way he was, he just took the two goals, no problem. But he does need a lot of effort with it to try and he gets the chances and then he goes oh he shoots over the bar or he doesn't pass or whatever he just seems sometimes his composure isn't right and that needs to change and i don't know if a new manager is going to be able to instill that into him or if it's just the, the level of the premier league's too much i'm not sure i mean we've seen it in the chat tonight you know there's a few people saying oh, when he first came in he was he's compared to harland and all this kind of stuff they're completely different type of players anyway to compare them but I mean, Haaland's very instinctive in front of goal, bang, it's in, before you know it type thing. Nunes, he can pull something out the bag and you think, wow, where did that come from? It's amazing. 
but then the next six shots he has are so wayward they're in the cop or they're hitting the tea lady in the corner by the corner flags. I mean, it's just mind boggling how if you mix both players together, you've got the perfect yeah. strike, you've got the perfect strike, yeah, yeah, this um, is it. He's a better footballer all around than Alan. It's just the striking, the, the shots. Striking, the, 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 striking, the, the shots. be the best striker in the world. You need yeah, the best striker in the world. Chances. Chances. You, you could have a new manager in, in the summer come in and he'll say, right, you're going to play this particular way and get used to that particular way in a team. And he could be phenomenal. Mm. You know, and just banging them in every week for fun. It just depends. I mean, Klopp is obviously, he's a fantastic manager. I'm never going to slag Klopp off like that. You know what I mean? But, from going from Mane, Firmino and Salah up front to trying this Liverpool 2.0 and we're trying different versions now to try and get the, the right balance, it isn't quite clicking all the time because we don't have them three fantastic players pressing you all the time. And it's the new players who have come in, you know, they've all got their little quirks of what they do differently to what maybe Klopp would want them to do. So it's, it's just taking time to get a, a settled front line and it, it's just not working that well for Nunes at the moment. At the mo now he's back. Uh, Carter's right. We can't play Jota from the start for 90 minutes. Mm -hmm. But he needs to play. He, he should have come on earlier tonight to he give him a run. Yeah, yeah, I know it's yeah, his first yeah. game back, but it's he should have played a little bit longer because um, he, he's probably one of the most natural finishers at the club, to be honest to him. When he gets his chance, he's normally quite clinical. So I would probably start him, um, even if he plays the first half against Palace, try and do the damage up front. You know, in the first half, and then kind of maybe change it after that. Liverpool's transfer business Liverpool's and their transfer. incomings always get praise, right? And, and rightly so, because it's been unbelievable for the last 10, 15 years. Most of the incomings have been absolutely sparked and worked. Even, you know, we don't do enough sometimes, and we'll always, we're always always left short. But when we have made the transfers, the normally, I said, 90% uh, unbelievable, 90% work. But this season, I don't, I don't get the amount of left wingers we're getting, and that needs that needs, does need questioning because Gakpo said he's better on the left, and he showed that tonight when he played tonight. He played brilliant tonight, um, and then Diaz is a left winger, and then for me, I still think Nunes is more left sided than a striker. He seems to he seems to be better when he cuts inside and shoots. He's better at shooting, just cutting inside and just going for it. Rather than being that that main guy who gets these one on one chances all the time, because he's not he's not like you said he's not composed enough to be these this guy to be one on one all the time. He'll put some in like that chip against who was it against? But he did the chip against where he, he just dinked it over, like that. He will come up with that now and then. But your clinical strikers, your clinical strikers will do it eighty percent of the chances they get. Eighty percent of the one on ones will get in. He don't even go around the keeper sometimes, and that just that for me. He's not a number nine in that sort. He's not. He's not a Harland. And when we've got and that, I question the Gakpo signing. Then thinking about that because we've already got Nunes, we've already got Diaz. Jota comes on the left as well sometimes. The Gakpo signing made no sense if that were the case. If you want a left winger again, what does the new manager need to do, Reese? Coming up, whether it be Amarim or anyone else. Uh, Where do you think he goes with this with this team? Do you think he gets rid of a couple of players? Or? Yeah, I think a couple of players will be going. I'm sure that wasn't there rumours about um, Diaz yeah. um, and PSG. It's been or, circulating. Yeah, and like I said, I rate Diaz. I think he's a good player, but the end product to me doesn't look like it's gonna it's gonna get get the. the obviously, as a footballer, he's great, but at times he's frustrating because he plays like a bit like a school kid at times, where it's too much skill. Sometimes it's too much cutting in, cutting back when certain times just needs to pull the trigger. So I could see potentially just because of the rumours maybe you can't keep everyone. I could see Diaz cashing on Diaz and then maybe Gapo gets to play play the left. Um Nunes, I still think they'll uh Nunes will be used. Like I said, in terms of the number nine it's tricky because like um King said, um he scored a couple goals against Newcastle, which is like how a number nine should be. He's kind of shown it in flashes like this season, and then now he's kind of, and then the last couple of games he's kind of gone back to how he was last season, where he just he was missing, he's missing the easy chances where he's not think thinking and stuff like that. And that um, couple other players who could get moved on, 
like I said, some fans may not want to hear it, but I would move Robinson on because I don't think he's good enough. I know people might keep him as the uh, backup, but if we play, if he plays the three four three, Robinson can't play as a as a, a third centre back. I think he's more like a left back, and he's now what he was more known for was the engine, having his engine being able to get up and down. Was I don't think he get up, up yeah. and down as much as he usually does. So I, I do think a couple guys, a couple guys will get moved on and known. Whoever the new managers, if it's the sporting um, manager, he will probably have one or two players of his own that he wants to bring in. So. Some players will get moved on and shuffle, uh, reshuffle. It will be interesting to see this summer, whether it be Amory Ma or anyone else, to see who makes the cut and doesn't. And will they get a chance next season to prove to be made the cut or not? Um, one thing I will say, though, before we do go, is it happened on Sunday against my United. Mm. There were, I saw the worst side of both sides of the Liverpool fans on Sunday. I saw the ones that were throwing the toys out of the pram saying, no, that's the that's it, the league's finished, and then blah, blah, blah. The league's not finished, by the way. <laughs> so, I don't know what, how you can think the league be finished when you're on the same points as the top of the league, and you're only getting a lot of goal difference. The league is not finished. But then I, I don't also like the other side of it, <laughs> where they ever got people that criticise, and saying, oh, just stick behind the players, they don't deserve criticising, you're all spoiled. Hang on a second. <laughs> no. If they played shit, they played shit. If you're going to say they played shit, they played shit. It doesn't mean that we think we are, they are shit. I've, I've said I've said Nunes has played poor. I've said I've said Salah's played poor. I've said Ando's played poor this season. But it doesn't mean that I think they're poor players. But in that specific game, they deserve the criticism. And the players will tell you the same thing as well. You know, the players will write this. The, the players have a different mindset to some fans. The players will say we deserve the criticism, and they'll be the first to criticize themselves as well because they've got a different mindset. They've got a, an elite mindset. When Quanta came in, he said, I'm taking over Matip. I'm glad he's got that mindset because if he had the mindset of some of our fans, we'd be pathetic. It's loser mentality mindset. Saying they can't criticise is loser mentality. I'm sorry. It's th- th- there's a reason why we, we might have won only one, tri- one Premier League in 30 years because of that loser mindset. Take the loser mindset out and don't have a go at fans that criticise because criticising is just a part of the game. Mm-hmm. And the fans have every single right to criticise. They're the ones, it's their team, especially the ones that go pay the money. They're the ones that are going to pay the money. We're paying subscription fees and things like that. We've spotted this team all our lives. We've had to deal with my United fans all our lives. You know what I'm saying? So, don't be overreactionary in terms of the league's not over. Maybe a little bit of reaction tonight because this could be over in terms of the Europa League. But even then, I still think we've got a chance. However, do not do not have a got people criticising because they have every single right to criticise for what they just saw tonight. Every single right for what they saw on Sunday. And if you don't like it, then don't listen to it. Let's lose a mentality and take it away from me. Thank you guys for tonight for joining us. I'm so sorry that it, <laughs> it is the way it is. 3-0 down. Atalanta next week. The replay back in Italy. But a matter of Crystal Palace on Sunday first. Will we bounce back? We don't know yet. But all we all we do know is we've got a big fight in our hands next week to, to in the Europa League to stay in this tie because three 0 going to Anfield is bad enough, but three 0 going away, it's a different kettle of fish. Uh, thank you all for tonight. Um, I hope we can get a better weekend this weekend, and I hope we can finish our win, get some smiles back on faces. Thank you, Reds. Have a good night.